So welcome everyone to Pumpkinhead Music Studio. Uh, we are in Christiansburg, Virginia. And the purpose of the video today is to uh, highlight um, the role of BART's, um, and this would be HRK's, ST596 processors used in stereo uh, during a mix uh, and mastering project. So right from the beginning, I want to apologize for not being a video production expert. I'm just not. Um, so the video portion of this is probably not going to tweak anybody's uh, fun button just because this is not what I'm set up to do and it's not my, my expertise. But that being said, I hope to show you a little bit of how I used BART's ST596s on a song that I wrote. Um, there will be some links in the description of the video to, for example, the full track, etc. at the end. Uh, but my goal uh, in this particular video is to show you the project I set up, talk a little bit about the writing process real quickly, and then go right to some samples. Uh, samples using the 596, uh, and obviously contrasting those samples without the 596. Um, and then we'll do some snippets of the actual song in which I use the 596 for um, for uh, the overall mix treatment. And then uh, then actually at the end of it, after the, after the samples, um, would like to go in and show you on the 596 what I did to get those particular sounds. Um, I'm hoping that this will encourage you to at least uh, think about uh, his project or uh, his products as an option for you. Uh, I think that uh, he's doing some really innovative work on some of these processors, uh, not just his color cards, but in this case, processors that are meant uh, to treat uh, sound in a little bit different way. And I, as I'm primarily a mix engineer, uh, I like to use things in stereo. So I have two ST596 modules that will be used extensively on this mix. Okay, so let's look at the mix really quickly. Again, pardon the motion, I'm not the video expert, but this is the song. And just, just um, again, the idea here is not to try to make you familiar with my DAW screen, but just to, to kind of show you if I get in closer here uh, with the, uh, uh, the focus, I think you'll be able to at least see the basic uh, construct of the song. Um, I have a couple of uh, reverbs right at the beginning, and then I have a synth that's going to be doing some chordal work for me. Um, all the drums are MIDI and done with uh, Superior Drummer 3. Uh, the rhythm, uh, there's a rhythm bus, which has four tracks, a rhythm two bus, which has four tracks, and then a solo bus, um, which just has two tracks. Of note, not part of this video, but every one of the tracks was recorded through Bart's preamps. If you'll pardon the motion on the camera, I can at least show you the preamps that were used. And here they are. They're a rack of his 568 Charlie preamps. And I was using four of them. Two of them have his opto compressor, the CP523V, uh, in line. And I was using that uh, for the tracks as well. So basically everything recorded on this song was recorded through HRK's gear as well. If you want a video on how I use the preamps uh, to what I think is the best effect, uh, let me know in the comments and we'll go from there. Um, other than that, let's get back to the song. So the first thing I want to play for you on uh, as, a, as a sound snippet is just a snippet of the song as it was recorded raw. There's no processing added to these tracks. This is directly from the preamp, um, which should actually showcase... Uh, the clarity of Bart's preamps uh, and and how easy it is to get good tracks with them. So stand by just a second. This will be just a couple minutes of a track.
So that was the track or the song as recorded with no processing added to it. Um, so what I decided to do with BART's five ST596 modules is I decided to treat several of the sources before I even used it on the overall mix. So the drums will be uh, will, were processed with the ST596 as, were the, as was the rhythm track, and actually a couple of other tracks, but those are the two I'm going to concentrate uh, on here as far as giving you some sound samples of uh, the tracks with and without the ST596. Now these will be level matched, so all they, although they may sound just a bit different uh, with regards to um, their levels, uh, that's as a result of the compression uh, and the overall leveling effect of the ST596. So right into the sound samples, I want to play you a section of the drums uh, with uh, both, uh, and we'll start with the drums without the uh, 596, and then we'll go with the drums with the 596. Uh, these, this will kind of start with a tom uh, section into a basic rhythm section. So if you'll bear with me, we'll listen to about a minute to a minute and a half of each one of these. So we're going to start with we're going to start with the uh, drums, and this is the dr these are the drums dry before I did the 596 processing. Okay, let's listen to that same section of the drums with the ST-596 treating the drum bus. Actually, quite a bit of difference. Uh, that uh, was super impressive uh, for me uh, to treat uh, or to, to hear the results. And again, I'll show you the settings that I used on the ST596 here in just a bit for both the drums and uh, and what we're doing for the overall mix. But uh, that should give you at least an aural uh, compare and contrast between uh, the dry drum uh, mix, which is after you know coming through Superior Drummer is all already treated, by, you know, within the uh, within Tune Tracks. Pro uh, uh, program a bit. It's compressed. It's there's some things that are that that's being done there to make it sound good good already. But it was pretty eye opening to hear what the 596 did super cleanly but super effectively uh, to the drum mix on this particular song. This next snippet will be the uh, the first rhythm guitar, and this is going to be dry without the 596 on the rhythm guitar for for the same section. Thank mm -hmm. you. Obviously, this was a loop, um, and now we're going to hear that same section of the loop with the 596 treating the 
rhythm bus. <laughs> This treatment was a bit more, and I'm going to move, be moving the camera here so that you all can see the 596 when we talk about what I was doing. Um, this uh, was a little bit more subtle on the rhythm treatment uh, with, uh, with regards to its effect on the sound, and I meant it to be that way. And I want to show, uh, show how you can do that with this particular processor, uh, as well as thinking about how to use it with a mastering in a mastering scenario. So... Left, right, uh, stereo, uh, stereo mix processing for the drum bus. What did I do for the drum bus? As a starter, I activated both the high frequency um, cut and the low frequency safe buttons. Um, these, you can find out how it works on Bart's page, but in a nutshell, the high frequency cut just has a little bit of a slope roll off after about 12K hertz, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, it really does a nice job. It would, I like having it in, treating the drum bus with regards to like, controlling the cymbals just a little bit. If you've got nice, expensive cymbals and good sounds, you might not need it. Um, and these are nicely recorded cymbals. But I still found that in the in the context of the overall mix, I liked the gentle roll-off uh, that happened with uh, the high-frequency cut at this point. The other thing uh, that I did is the low-frequency safe. What that does when you activate it is it keeps your lower frequencies basically in this in this scenario, right? The kick and your tom, your lower tom frequencies, the the main fundamental frequencies of those instruments. It does not allow the and this is going to be a harmonic generator. Um, uh, the, the this uh, this what he calls drive is going to add harmonics to the signal and. Pressing the low frequency safe or the LFS button keeps those low frequencies from being treated in the same way, right? Uh, so it, it it maintains a little bit more solidity down low is probably the best way to describe it uh, in that case. Um, and I activated both of those. Um, for the drums, I actually rotated uh, my drive mechanism about to or 1.30 to 2 o'clock on both sides. Uh, I actually wanted a decent amount of harmonics happening up there with the drums. And then I left the dry all the way up. So what uh, what Bart does here is he allows you to blend that uh, those harmonics that you're dialing in with um, the drive button to blend those using the wet pot here with your dry signal. I left my dry all the way up and moved the wet into uh, the region where I wanted it. Here, I had it up about halfway, uh, at about 50%. Right about noon for the drums is where I left it. Um, and again, dry signal. Um, if, you're, if you look close, my dry knobs are, they may not look matched, but they are, and this is why um, these are two separate units, <laughs> and they're not stereo, and they're not stereo matched, and, and it would be really tough to stereo match this kind of a circuit. Um, so as a result, I have them just tuned just a little bit differently to uh, make sure that my left and right uh, signals going through there are stereo matched, and I've got a nice stereo image. But basically, the dry is all the way up. Let me put this back so it doesn't jiggle or, or wobble around. With regards to the drum signal, I also activated the tape emulator, the tape mix, and it was about right here where I had it, which is almost, at, you know, like three o'clock. This is, uh, I, I had it really dialed in uh, pretty quickly, and obviously if you want to last, or all this does is adds a, um, a t an amount of harmonic distortion uh, to emulate a bit of tape, but realize that as you really move it up, it's going to emulate more of a dirty tape, uh, maybe a misaligned tape. You're going to get more uh, more THD into the signal. Um, and then he's got a very handy here. Um, unless that light's on, it's not doing anything. I can do all of that and nothing's happening. But with this process light, I actually have to bring uh, all the processing into the circuit. So you actually have a hard bypass, uh, which is really nice to do your A and B comparisons. So how did I have it set up for the rhythm guitar? Well, for one, on the rhythm guitar, I actually left the tape in, 
but I dialed it way back. I mean, maybe 8.30 to 9 o'clock on the tape emulator, just a touch uh, to allow a bit of smooth, uh, it's just a little bit of smooth harmonic distortion to come into the signal. On the, uh, on the drive circuit at the beginning, uh, or at the at the front of his uh, circuit or his uh, uh, harmonic uh, generation engine here. Again, I left the dry all the way up, wet back to again about twenty five percent, and um, the the drive knobs themselves more about nine thirty to ten o'clock is where I had those. Still had the high frequency cut in, still had the low frequency safe in. This just gave me a bit of polish. And if you uh, if you've listened closely to the clips, that's what you'll hear. It's just a, a bit of a a a polishing of the signal, a narrowing of it, if you will, just very, very, you know, very lightly on both ends. Uh, and that tiny touch of harmonic distortion kind of almost softens the signal a bit. It's the rhythm signal after all. Didn't want to just, uh, just jam it, uh, in that, in that sense. Um, I treated several other of the tracks in the overall song. Um, and just as a preview, I, I'm not going to go as deep as I did for the drums and the rhythm here. Um, the, the, the solo, uh, the solo uh, track is also tr uh, treated by the ST596. Settings close to this, a little bit more tape, and at the same time I was pushing uh, within the DAW uh, some of the uh, some of the mid frequencies to allow a cut with a little bit of that blending, uh, that that uh, ability to be blended with other signals. Uh, definitely. Um, uh, a few more harmonics in the lead as well. Uh, but what I really want to talk to you about is the the master, because we're going to look at a couple more um, a couple more audio snippets here in just a second. And how did I treat uh, the master uh, master mix? And that was very different um, as I was processing the entire mix through these boxes than, of course, the single instruments. And that would make sense, right? So um, one thing I did is I got rid of the high frequency cut. I wanted all my high frequency content at that point uh, in the signal. Did leave the low frequency safe on there uh, for the sake of uh, uh, for the sake of uh, of keeping my low end nice and solid. I also did not use a tape the tape simulator circuit at all. I left that out of the circuit uh, altogether. But what I did do is I took the drive. I actually moved the drive up probably around fifty percent, maybe fifty five percent. But I very very maybe. I don't know, eight o'clock or so, it's just a touch of that uh, overall harmonic content uh, being added to the overall mix. So it looked mainly like this uh, is the way I used uh, the modules for the overall mastering piece. Um, that's the way I, I, I wanted to demonstrate, and now we're going to move back to, uh, to audio clips. I wanted to demonstrate uh, to anybody who's interested how versatile uh, the ST-596 is. I, mean, I used it all over this song and then used it again in the mastering process for the song itself. Um, so not only is it um, an individual source or a bus processor, but it can also sit on your two bus without any issues and actually add, you know, really be a value added uh, um, uh, piece of your signal chain at that point. Okay, so let's move back to some uh, some audio signals. Pardon moving the camera. So what we're going to do here, I hope it doesn't bore you too much to just kind of look at the uh, stereo monitors. Um, but uh, at this point, I'm going to play for you a snippet of, of uh, the overall mix. Uh, and it's only going to be about a two-minute snippet. Um, and that two-minute snippet is going to be without the 596 treating the whole signal. Do you realize that the 596 is still, you're still hearing its effects on some of these individual tracks, right? Um, but this is the 596, or the, the, the snippet of the song mastered without the 596 in the mastering chain. Stand by. And here we go.
the same snippet, exact same snippet, with uh, the 596 in the signal, in the mastering chain, um, it, it, it being treated there. So uh, hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, what I want you to listen for here is the fact that it might sound a bit fuller. Uh, to me, it does, um, and etc. even though the levels are matched with the, the snippet that you just heard. So here comes the uh, same section with the 596 treating the overall mix. That should probably wrap us up at that point. I will, um, uh, like I say, in the links down below, uh, you'll be able to uh, to hear the overall song, which I'll just go ahead and start playing in the background. But uh, that is the way I think that the ST-596 really shines in an overall studio context. It can be used for single sources. It can be used for treating overall buses. It can definitely be used in your overall two bus uh, mixing environment, and it can be used as a mastering tool. A super, uh, super flexible, exceptional sonics. Um, I didn't, you know, obviously it's adding some uh, distortion as well as some harmonics. Uh, so that's its purpose. So it's going to dirty up the signal at a place. But apart from the wanted uh, harmonics and total harmonic distortion, there was no other noise. And the bypass is exceptionally clean. Uh, very happy uh, to have the chance to use these tools in the studio. And as you can tell, um, looking at the studio itself, I do not want for hardware. Um, I really am very blessed to have a, a, a pretty much what I want to use. Um, and the ST-596s are going to make an exceptional uh, addition to the studio. Leave a comment below if you liked the video or not. Um, if you want to hear something else, or more importantly, I think uh, if you'd like me to do a little bit more work in the same vein about showing how I use uh, BART's gear uh, as far as preamps and the recording side of things, uh, because I think those are somewhat misunderstood as I read the threads on Gear Sluts and elsewhere. Um, so anyway, be well, stay safe, uh, take care of you or yourself and your uh, loved ones and have a wonderful Thanksgiving and hopefully don't go too crazy on Black Friday but I would definitely check out Bart's site uh, to see what he's got going on for Black or excuse me for whatever Black Friday I guess is what you call it or Cyber Monday or whatever I'll be looking to to see if there's something I can snap up as a bargain so take care out here <laughs>